to terminations. And I like to do this because, you know, it's some reminders that, you know, when you're going through your annual review process, I think of termination refreshers and impairment refreshers just kind of go hand in hand because these are kind of the unique activities throughout the year. And so a termination, uh, we kind of touched on a little bit, but it's going to be, you're going to lose access to that asset and you're going to remove it from your books by removing your right of use asset and your lease liability. That difference is going to be the gain or loss. Most of the time, you're going to get this gain or loss. However, there are some caveats for terminations without a gain or loss. And this would be, so let's say that at lease commencement date, you had a lease termination option and you plan to always exercise that option and you included the lease termination penalty fee within your lease payment schedule. So you basically just did everything right. You had a crystal ball and therefore it at the lease termination date, it really already had a right of use asset and a lease liability balance of zero for both of them. So there's not going to be gain or loss there. And then also, if the termination was known months in advance, well, then it may be treated as a modification. Let's say, you know, you're going through your leases right now and you've decided that you're trying to negotiate by the end of the year, getting out of a certain lease. Well, you know that months in advance, and then you could treat that more of a modification and include there's likely going to be some sort of early termination fee. Maybe you're going to have to increase your rent payments, something based on the discussion with your landlord, but that could be treated as a modification with no impact to the income statement. You're just going to really, again, drive the lease liability balance down likely because of the shortened lease term. And so for this fairly simple example, but so what would the gain or loss be if you had the following facts? The lease termination date was 12-31-2023. And for simplicity purposes, let's assume that uh, this termination date was a surprise meaning none of the caveats on the previous uh, slide were applicable to this one. Uh, and we're going to calculate really the difference between the right of use asset and the lease liability, but then also how do we treat this termination fee within our journals? And so similar to really any journal entry, what I do is I'm first going to place my right of use asset. So I've got to remove that. So I'm going to credit that. I got to remove my lease liability, so I'll debit the 125. My cash paid is 10,000, so I got to credit my cash. And then what's left over is going to be my, my gain or loss. So I have right there, I have earned myself a little termination gain. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone.